following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are, uh, as you can uh, figure out, continuing with our discussions related with the book of Genesis. And to study it in order to discover how uh, the writer, Moses, great Kabbalist, hid a lot of wisdom related with alchemy and with Kabbalah, which is very clear, but only to those that study Kabbalah and alchemy. People in this day and age have those books that are called in Hebrew the Torah. They're called the Torah because they rise from what we also call Taro. Taro, Torah, the same. And it's because as Master Samael on the or stated in one of his books, he said the author of the Tarot was the angel Metraton. He is the Lord of the Serpent Wisdom. The Bible refers to him as the prophet Enoch. The angel Metatron, or Enoch, delivered the Tarot in which the, entire, the entirety of divine wisdom is enclosed. The tarot remains written in stone. He also left us the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet or Aramaic alphabet. This great master lives in the superior worlds in the world of Atziluth, which is a world of indescribable happiness. According to Kabbalah, this world is the region of Keter, a very high sephira. All Kabbalists base themselves on the Tarot, or Torah, and it is necessary for them to comprehend the Tarot and study it deeply. The universe was made with the law of numbers, measurements, and weight. Mathematics form the universe, and the numbers become living, living entities. This is why we always insist in the study of the 22 letters given by the angel Metatron, who, when he was alive, uh, his name was Enoch. And uh, if you investigate all the books of uh, what is called the Old Testament in the Bible, you will see that the original books were written, whether in Aramaic or Hebrew which are precisely uh, the languages that use the 22 letters 
of uh, the alphabet, the two letters of Kabbalah, that the angel Metatron, Enoch, brought to the earth for all the souls. And that's why we always insist there that if you don't know by memory the 22 letters, which are only 22, and the meaning of it, you won't grasp what is written in the Bible, especially in the book of Genesis. As in the first graphic, you see that uh, we are showing the title of the lecture, which is Yad, the river of Eden. <clears throat> and in the graphic, we brought the letter, I mean, the word Yad and the Hebrew letter related to that, which Enoch, the angel Mitatron, says that is a river of Eden. But when you see the letter, you see how is this a river, right? And of course, related with this river, <coughs> in our lectures, we are talking and addressing the different patriarchs that uh, are in the book of Genesis. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Four patriarchs. Three above in the second triangle of the tree of life, and one below, in Yesod, which make the four rivers of Eden. And we were discussing about it uh, in different aspects, but now we are going to be deeper in order for us to comprehend what is it? Why are we always emphasizing the river of Eden? Eden, of course, voluptuousness, bless, bliss, and uh, here, in the first graphic, we have uh, Jacob, who humbly is bending towards Isaú, his brother. After returning from the land uh, of uh, Laban, Laban, uh, the brother of uh, his mother. Laban means white, related with light. I mean, he was coming from the higher worlds down to the earth. And of course, with him, his four wives and children that we know as the children of Israel, which is, or which are, in other words, the archetypes, the psychic or psychological archetypes that we had to work with and to develop inside. And we are going to talk about that in relation with his wives. And for that, we need to understand that, as Master Krumheller states, there are two uh, main energies or forces in the universe that we call prana and akash. Prana is positive and Akash is negative in relation with polarities. Akash, we call it the primordial matter or the water in the space. Not that is the water as we find it here in the three-dimensional world as a liquid, but uh, uh, an element which contains the prana. And this is the main point here in this lecture, because the letter Yad contains that, the prana and the akash, together. And by knowing that is how we disclose and understand what the Bible is telling us about this mysterious river that we addressed in different aspects already. So, Akash is feminine, and Prana is masculine. But they together form that drop of water that we call 
Yad, as you see there, which is uh, that letter with which we write the holy name of God. Yo, the hey, vav, hey, is the first one. Of course, according to the numbers of the Hebrew letters, the letter Yad is the number 10. But if you add the numbers of the num number 10, it equals 1. That's why when we address Keter, the first Sephira, we say it's Yad or it's Aleph. Because Aleph is 1 and Yad is 10, but 10 is 1 in synthesis. And that's why we said that the letter Aleph contains two Yads. But by seeing that is how we understand this uh, mystery of the water in combination with the fire. Remember that the Master Samael states that we had to be baptized by water first, then by fire. And of course, in relation with this baptism of water and fire, we find the famous scale or the octave, the scale of seven notes, which we always uh, state relates to the seven initiations that we had to pass through, psychologically speaking. And those seven initiations are related with the seven lower sephirath in the tree of life which are Chesed, Geburah, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut. By seeing this seven, we understand Jacob. Remember that after the problem that he had with his brother Isaú, when he takes the inheritance with a trick from Isaac, he goes away into the land of his mother and father. And of course, that land is up here in that, in the world of Bria, the world of creation. From there, <coughs> he goes, but before leaving, he has this mysterious dream where he falls asleep by putting his head on a rock which is the mysterious rock of Yesod. And in there he sees the ladder that go up to heaven. That ladder, states the Master Samael Ombior, has seven rungs. And is precisely the second rung where Jacob is having that experience. He sees the ladder where the Malachim, which is the holy name for Difereth, means angels, go up and down, up and down, seven, the scale. And this is precisely very significant because when he goes up to the land of his parents, which is in that, in the world of Bria, he goes psychologically. This is precisely what we have to understand. In the Bible is written, of course, that he goes physically. Because these patriarchs were physical in this, in this world. They had physical bodies. But each one of them were representing an archetype with their lives. So while you read Jacob's story, it's not related with the physical plane, but with the psyche, as we explained, that he represents what we call in Sanskrit, the chit, or the chitta. That psyche that we had to work with, that we had to develop, and that is situated here in Yesad, because the body chitta that we name here is a union of the chit, the psyche, and geburah, 
which is the spiritual soul. Where we find Isaac, because Jacob is the son of Isaac. And if you see Geburah here, which is the spiritual soul, and Jacob being the human soul, then we understand that the human soul is a projection of the spiritual son, the spiritual soul. And this is Jacob. But in us, it's an embryo that we have to work with. And that's the story of Jacob, how he goes up and brings all the archetypes down with him by working with these forces that are written in clue in the Bible. That journey is a psychological journey, spiritual, that we have to, to know when reading the story of him, because Jacob is Tifereth. And all of the pro, uh, work that he does, he does it in Yesod. But up, and it's precisely all the work that we are doing here. Because in order to work in ourselves, we have to be, as you write there, you see there, Ishmael, which is another name that we stated relates to the physical body, or as we wrote here, the devotee's physical body. Because everybody in this physical world have a physical body. But not everybody is a devotee of the doctrine. Because Ishmael means he who listened to God. Obviously, in these lectures or in any religion, any devotee that listened to the doctrine, <coughs> whether the Hebrew doctrine or another religion, in Hebrew, he is called Ishmael because he listened to the word of God. Little by little, this Ishmael realizes that he has to work in himself. And this is precisely what the Bible hides. Because you have in Hebrew religion, Orthodox, that uh, custom that they have, or that tradition called uh, Madvitzvah, right? The mitzvah, which is uh, the initiation of a boy, which is 13 years old, in order to him to enter into adulthood, right? And that, that's a transition. And it's precisely the age when Ismael was circumcised, according to the Bible, together with Abraham. And after that circumcision, Sarai, or Sarah, became pregnant by Abraham, and Isaac was born. That is telling us very clear that if we want Isaac to be born inside of us, in the first initiation of Mirror Mysteries, first we have to listen to the Word of God and to be circumcised. This circumcision, of course, is symbolic as well. We know that Jewish believers and also Muslims <coughs> and many other religions practice circumcision. But we are here talking about the symbolism of it. When you cut the prepucius or the pennies of any 13-year-old Men, in this case, the symbol, meaning that he's entering into the mysteries of sex and he's cutting the flesh of his animality in order to renounce to the spasm and the orgasm. That's the meaning of circumcision. Because you know, there's a lot of people that practice that tradition, but they don't transmute their sexual energy. They keep fornicating with their circumcision. But the Bible states that in order to teach that in both sides, 
the seed of Ab Abraham is always the physical body, seed of Abraham. But inside the work that we are going to do is also a seed of Abraham. And God wants the pact with Isaac, not with Ishmael. But Ishmael is necessary. Because it's the physicality that we have. It's he who listens to the word of God and practices it. That's Ishmael. And eventually, of course, that uh, within him will be born uh, Isaac, which is the one that brings Jacob. And Jacob brings all the 12. When Joseph is, and all the story that you read in Genesis, how developed, how it's developed inside psychologically. Joseph existed physically, as well as the other patriarchs, because each one of them were bringing the doctrine of that particular archetype. Problem is that people still are identified with their physicality and confused as Christians that do not know that the master of Veramento physically existed, but he brought the doctrine of our inner particular archetype related with Christ that all of us had within. If we don't work with that particular archetype called Christ within, it doesn't matter if we believe or not believe in Jesus. But people think that just by believing in him, is this, this is it, as well the other uh, symbols or other patriarchs that brought the doctrine of those archetypes, the thing that uh, everything is physical. And they even have a division here among the people that they think that they are the followers of Isaac and others of Ishmael, when the two archetypes relate to each other. So this is very important to understand. And remember that Ishmael is precisely the physicality of the devotee, and above it in Keter is Metatron, Enoch, right? the one that brought all this wisdom to the planet Earth. And Metatron, here you find all his 22 letters plus the five final letters, which relate to the final way in which you write them at the end of any word, and with its values. The values are important in order to, to you to understand what are you reading. This is why every Kabbalist knows the letters and knows the values of them, and that's why it is good to have a chart always of the letters, which we always have here in this uh, uh, school, as you can see there, we have them there in this uh, association. So, <coughs> since we are emphasizing the letter Yad, we put here below this chart of the letters two hands. Because unless you have an accident and lost your hand, one hand, all of us have two hands. In Hebrew, Yad symbolizes a close hand that is given. You see, the right hand gives. If I give you something, you will extend your hand in order to receive it. The hand that receives, that contains what is given, is called kaf. That's why we have the two hands here, the yad and the kaf. It says an extended or open hand is kaf. And it's beautiful that. Because in the Bible, they always talk about the hands of God. The left, the calf, receives, is feminine. Contains a lot. That's why the woman is the one that creates. 
in her womb. But the one that gives the seed to deposit into the egg, which is the seed of the woman, is the man. And he's called Yad. So you see, in order to plant, in order to sow, you need your two hands. Your left hand holding the seeds and the right one taking and put it into the ground. That's the parable of the sower. You read it in the, in the Gospels. So here you see how the two hands are related. And that's why it is stated that God planted the man in the earth or made it with dust and used his two hands in order to make man. Right? But the people that read that literally, they think that is a physical God there with two hands making with clay something that like we explained in the previous lecture. But this is not like that. The two hands are forces. One is feminine and the other is masculine. And with the two polarities is how God works in creation. And this is how we have to understand it in order to comprehend it deeply. Uh, and listen what uh, uh, Enoch uh, says. In order for you to be more, uh, uh, now he's uh, playing with me. Okay. Uh, before entering into that, uh, uh, let me tell you uh, in the next graphic what we wrote there. The mysteries of Kabbalah and alchemy are hidden within allegorical legends, which are like buried coffins that hide spiritual treasures, written by initiates and rediscovered by initiates. However, ignoramuses generally interpret these mysteries literally. Allegory means the representation of abstract ideas, principles, or archetypes by characters, figures, or events in narrative, narrative, dramatic, or pictorial form. Synonyms, synonyms of allegory are symbol, story, tale, myth, symbolism, emblem, fable, parable, apology. So all of that is, you see, and that's why when we read the Bible, we have to take in, in, in mind that. And now we are only reaching one letter in order for you to understand the allegory or the myth or the symbol related with it. And here you find this marvelous graphic of uh, William Blake <coughs> related with the seventh day, which is the letter Yad. A drop of water. It says, and God bless it, the seventh day. The seventh day is the second, second chapter of the book of Genesis. And is where we find the mystery, the mystery of the Yad, the river. Right? With all the four rivers of Eden. And all that marvelous narration in which you find the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve... And those beautiful things written, of course, alchemically and Kabbalistically. Uh, the letter Yad is there, again. But in Hebrew, you write hand with two letters. The letter Yad and the letter Dalet. Just that. Yad, hand. The value of the letter Yad is 10. The value of the letter Dalet is 4. Making the addition, you have 15. In order to reduce it to a number, a letter, is it 4? I mean, uh, I mean 14. I said 15, but it's 14. 10 plus 4 is 14. 1 plus 4 equals 5. 
you see? And in order to tell you that it's five, I'm showing you my hand. Five. Enoch says that the reading of Eden resembles the letter Yad. And if we read the, how it is spells, Yad and Dalet, you find five. It means the river that comes from above and divides in four. And that's your hand. Now, if you state that the letter Yad ex, uh, expels Yod Vav Dalet, and then you said, and that doesn't give the number, number five, but gives another, because 10 plus six, which is Vav, is 16. Plus four of Dalet is 20. And 20 is the value of the letter Kaf. So whether you spell Yad with two letters or with three, always gives you the two hands. One masculine and the other feminine. No matter how you do it. And this is precisely the beauty of the Hebrew alphabet, of the Kabbalah. To see how everything is hidden there only for those that study it. Otherwise, the lazy ones that don't know, they, they, they don't get it, and they just follow traditional things which have no meaning. Now, if you see, for instance, the value of the letter Kaf is 20, and the letter Pe, final, is 800. 800 plus 20? is 10, and 10 is the letter Yad. So it's no escape there. It's always given the same thing. Numbers are living entities in relation with the letters of Kabbalah. Isn't this beautiful? And you always have there the, the play of the, of the two forces. <coughs> That's it. This is why the book of Zohar states in the ancient book of Enoch, the third book, chapter 48, from 1 to 4, the course of the celestial river of life is described as resembling the letter Yad. When you know already what we explained, then you said, yeah, obviously it is. Resembles the letter Yad. Because the book of Genesis says, and a river came out of Eden and divided into four. The river that came out of Eden is one, and divided into four is five. It's a letter Yad. No problem to understand that. But here you find, I quoted that from uh, the third book of Enoch, that unfortunately is not in the Bible. But it is written there. Metatron shows Rabbi Ishmael the right hand of the Most High, now inactive behind him, but in the future des destined to work the deliverance of Israel. You see? The deliverance of Israel. When you read that there, it says, what? Behind him is not active. The devotee, which is Ishmael, as we were explaining there, is a devotee that studies the Kabbalah, but he's not practicing it because he doesn't understand it yet. But when he starts practicing it, he starts putting in activity the river which is behind him. It's not like looking back and saying, what is behind me? No, in his back, in other words. In his back, behind him. That is not active in him. He's a, uh, 
devotee studying Kabbalah. But that river is, is not active because he's fornicating. Because this is what uh, in the physical world people do. But when you learn what the meaning of, of uh, circumcision and you follow the path, <coughs> and then you start working with those waters in your back. Rabbi Ishmael said, Metatron said to me, you see, but Metatron is a very high. It was in, in meditation, obviously, because the devotee can meditate, enter into Samadhi, and go out and to talk with God. If I am telling you this, it's not because I read it. Many times I meditate go out of my body and I talk with my own particular individual keter because every one of you have their own keter and in order to talk with that part of yourself you have to go out of your body and many devotees do it and then God will say yes I'm the higher part of you but you still are not working I remember the first experience that I had. And I talked with that Keter. He says, what do you want to know? I want to know if I am doing something down there in the physical world. And then he answered directly, no, you're still doing nothing. Right? And he says, oh, well, that's a very frank answer. <laughs> and I returned to my body and said I had to work harder. Right? But listen here how Metatron, which is that part of Enoch, or that Keter, that is talking with Ishmael and explain to him about this that we are talking here, but in Kabbalistic alchemical way. Come! says Metatron, and I will show thee the right hand of Makom. Makom means space, means also means seal, and has many other meanings. You see the space there, the universe, and, and the, the celestial stars within a Makom, space. This is what we call also the abstract, ab abstract absolute space. When you have an experience with the absolute abstract space, a hand can come through that space and give you a book. Study this. That hand is the letter Yad giving you. And then you have to put your hand to receive it. Many paints are showing that, and that's the symbol of it. Makom. But we wrote here, Yad Yamim. Yad Yamin. This is how you write right hand in Hebrew or Aramaic. Yad, we know already, is hand. Yamin sometimes means just right hand. But the interesting thing of this is this. Why just the word Yamin means right hand? Because the letter Yad is in the beginning. If the letter Yad is in the beginning, that means hand. And Yamin means right. <coughs> but if we take the word, the letter Yad from Yamin, and then we remain with Min. And Min means sex. Sexuality in Hebrew is Minit. Sex or kind. So obviously, right hand of God, of Makom, it means the river of sexual force, the creative sexual force. It's just saying that alchemically, very clear. Behind him, they laid behind him, the spine, because of the destruction of the holy temple. How do you destroy your holy temple? By fornicating, by Feeling the energy from which all kinds of splendor and light shine forth 
anguish, anguish the night 155 heavens were created. Now, when you make the addition of all, of all of these numbers, 9 plus 5 plus 5 is 19, plus uh, 1 plus 9 is 10, again, it goes to the letter Yad. 10 sephiroths, which are made by the letter Yad, the sexual force. And whom not even the seraphim and the ophanim are permitted to behold until the day of salvation shall arrive. Inside of you, you are not worthy to, to see it until you start working with your own particular Yeshua, your own particular force, because salvation is Yeshua. You call Jesus. It's inside. When you start working with it, then you start seeing things. And I went, says Ishmael, by his side, and he took me by his yad, by his hand, and showed me the right hand of Makom. You see, above this right hand of Makom, you find this uh, beautiful uh, painting of William Blake. And when you see the right hand of Makom, doing, of course, what he has to do. With all manner of praise, rejoicing and song, and no mouth can tell its praise, and no eye can behold it, because of its greatness. Dignity, majesty, glory, and beauty. And not only that, but all the souls of the righteous, which means those that practice sexual alchemy and chastity, who are counted worthy to behold the joy of Jerusalem. They are standing by it, praising and praying before in three times, every day saying. And then he quotes, he not quotes, Isaiah. Awake, awake, put on strength. Oz, that's the word. O arm of yod which is Chokhmah. When you read this, for me, it's very clear that he's talking about the arm of Chokhmah that goes into, into Gebura, because Gebura is a strength, but also called Oz. And when he says, awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of yod which is the force of Chokhmah, so what, what is that? How to awake? I mean, awake, awake. How the, an arm will awake? You study the tree of life. You know very well that the force of Gebura comes down to Malkut. We explain in the lectures. In order for you to have the strength, sexual strength, in other words, physically, men, erection, you need to awake the forces in order for the blood to circulate there. So when he said, awake, awake, arm of yod it means do something in your court with your priestess wife and have her action. Because that is the first river called Pishon. That is, give the strength to the human male in the sexual act. According to as it is written in Isaiah, and he quotes again Isaiah, he calls his glorious arm Tifereth, you see, Zeroah, Tifereth, Zeroah means arm, to go at Netzach, victory, the right hand of Moses. Tifereth, we explain, is in the middle, is in the heart, and it relates with Moses, which is willpower. So that strength goes to the heart, which is the one that pumps the blood, towards the mind, which is Netzach, the right hand of Moses, because that was the, the, the Moses doing all of these marvels, you know, dividing the waters of the Red Sea. He was doing it 
because he was receiving the strength of Geburah through Tiferet into his right, because Moses is the one that controls the mind, the Pharaoh, in other words. Let my people go. What are those people? The archetypes. But the mind has to be controlled, which is the Pharaoh, with the right hand of Moses. But Moses is Tiferet and receives the strength. In other words, in order to do that, you had to practice alchemy. Moses is there, willpower. But uh, the sexual fire had to awake. Has to awake. Awake, awake. It's not talking about your, your psyche. You have to awake relation with alchemy. And those are the rivers. Because Tifereth is Hedikel. And the right side, the other river, which is called uh, River Pichon and, and, the, and the river Gihon. Pichon, Gihon, Tifereth. You see? He's naming there the three rivers without writing the names. Tifereth is one, Geburah is another. And Geser is another, which is above uh, Netzach. So three rivers. In that moment, the Yad Yamin, right hand of Makom, which means the seal, that seal is the seal of chastity, was weeping. And there went forth from its five fingers, five rivers of tears and fell down into the great sea and shook the whole world according to what is written. The earth is utterly broken. That's Malkut. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall stagger like a drunken man and shall be moved to and fro like a hut. Five times corresponding to the five fingers of his great right hand. But that great right hand relates to the forces of Akash and Prana. That the initiate is working in the very sexual act. When he is not practicing the sexual act as an animal. But he is doing it with transmutation. And this is all that is written there in the book of Enoch, Kabbalistically, alchemically. And that is what the book of Zohar points about that Enoch states that the river of Eden has the form of a letter Yad. Or the letter Yad that has the two hands, positive and negative, that we are talking about here. You understand it, right? You follow. This is precisely the, the, the river of Eden that we are addressing here. And that's why <coughs> the book of Genesis states, and from Atziluth, a river, Naher, or Haner, Hanir, a lamp. We'll stop here and explain that. How do you write river in Hebrew? With three letters. Nun, hey, resh, na, her. But if you take the letter hey out and put it in the beginning, then you read hanir. And that means a lamp or the lamp. It says, you will read in that way with that anagram we said, and from Atiluth, a lamp departed into Bria, the superior aspect of Eden, to water with light the garden in Yesod Malkut, Egypt. Because the light, or the water, in other words, is the habitat of the light, the habitat of the fire. And in this day and age, it's easy to understand that. Thanks to the force of the water, we have light, electricity. 
And with electricity, we can burn many things. So when he said a lamp came out of Eden, a river, same thing. Because a river carries the water. The water carries the light. And from thence, from Yasod Malkut, it, the name, was parted and became into four heads. <coughs> the name is written there in a hidden way. What is the name? Hashem. Four heads. Abraham, which is Gihon. Isaac, which is Pishon. Jacob, which is Herikel. And Joseph, which is down here, is called Euphrat. Euphrat is, or Prat. The right name is Prat. When we read it, Ewa Prat means the Prat, which is Yasod. And then we quoted Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. Or in other words, for the commandment is a lamp, and the Torah is a light. It's light. A light. Because Torah or Tarot is the same thing. It's a light. And this is what we're giving here. Light. This is how it is, it is written there in the book of Genesis. Matthew Samael stated, It is impossible to reach deep realization without the alchemy of the feminine solar forces, the light of Atziluth. Christ, in his dignity as cosmic rites, said, I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. In John chapter 10. The Christonic substance, the son of Chokmah, Yeshua, the savior of the world, is placed in Frat, which is Yasad, called Euphrates. Our Christonic semen, this is why the door that enters into Eden is in Yasad, our sexual organs, Samael on the door. He wrote always in synthesis. When you read the Bible, it says, yeah, of course. Frat is a sexual force in our physicality. This is what is called the Garden of Eden. And we always take these two sephirot, Yasod and Malkut, as one. Because they are one. Yasod is the four dimension, the vital body. And the three-dimensional body is a physical body. Both of them correlate. They are one body. Uh, vital body is the superior aspect of Malkut. That's why uh, Master Samael says, if we investigate Malkut, we discover that it came out of Yesod as well, which is sex. So, <coughs> when studying the Holy name of God, yod Hey vav Hey. Then you discover about this river. Because Yad is a river, right? And we discover that has, or is written as a hand, Yod and Dalet, which means five. And when we said, so Yad, hand, has a value of five, according to the numbers. And five is Hey. The fifth letter of the holy name of God. That means that that Yad is within He. When we said He, we said Yad inside. He is uh, spelled with Aleph. But Aleph is Yad to Yads. It's a force. That's why the He is feminine. A feminine word that holds. And that's why Yod He spells Ja, hallelujah, 
Ja. The two forces of eating within us. And the number five <coughs> plus the number ten of the letter Yod means six. It means that Yod and He expresses it to Vav, which is the six. That's why this is the mystery of the holy name of God, Yod He Vav, six. So in Vav, you find the Yad hidden and the letter He containing it. This is the mystery of the Trinity. So when you say, and with the other He of Yod He Vav He, is here. Ha near to follow the sequence of the holy name of God. That's why you find in the next graphic Abraham kneeling be before three angels. If you read the Bible, those three angels appear before the birth of Isaac. Because here is Sarai listening to what the angel says to Abraham. He says, Sarah, Sarai, your wife, will be pregnant. And that child will be your seed that will follow the pact with God. No Ishmael. Ishmael has to work in order to develop that. But that is inside, you see. All of that is inside. Abraham is addressing these three angels at my Lord. And the Lord came to me, my Lord and my Lord. But he says, why is he talking a single when he is before three? Because these yod hey vav are one. God is one. A had. But appears like three. It's like we. We have mind, emotion, and sexual motor brain three brains but we are one individual the same way up there car is three but it's one force and symbolized by angels in order for you to comprehend to understand and the deep thing of this is what the bible says and the spirit of Elohim that we always state is Abraham was hovering over the surface of the waters of Eden. Because this is where our own particular spirit has to hover. Our own waters. Take for your mind that the spirit is hovering there in the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean. Because in us, in alchemy, what is important is for the spirit to hover above our own waters, which are the sexual forces that we are pointing here, which is Yad, the river of Eden. And that's why we wrote the name of God there, yod he vav he in order to understand. Because in the other lecture, we told you, Yad is in the head, He is in the throat, Vav is your spinal medulla, and He is your sexual force. This is how you see the four-letter God, name of God, in you, in your physicality. Now you find the word here, chipka. <coughs> read uh, in the way that uh, we had to read it, because many people will read this chipcha, but ch doesn't sound like that in Hebrew. It is not such a word or sound. It's ch. It's the letter chet. Chipka is written there in red. That means servant, made servant. And this is very important to understand because every single wife of the patriarchs, whether Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they have 
the wives have Chipka, a servant, a maid. If you understand symbology, you will understand that the four wives of the patriarchs, which are Sara, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, not Rachel, Rachel is how you say it, are four. According to uh, uh, the Bible, Hagar had Ishmael, but he was a chipka of Sarai. And the other, Bilha and Silpa, were the maidens of the two sisters that marry Jacob. But those are the lower aspect of the hay. We always know that the matriarchs represent the letter hay above in that, and the servants, the other hay. The book of Sohar states, you know, Kabbalists know, <coughs> that the th fourth letter hay, which is repeated in the name of God, is the daughter or the servant or the first letter hay. And this is how you interpret that. Not like people think, or oh, Jacob has as wives two sisters, and also have sexual act with the maids, the maidens. <coughs> Literally, you read it, but it's not that. That's why the Book of Sohar states. And the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made. Asya! <coughs> and he rested on Malkut, the seventh day, for all of his work, which he had made. And Elohim blessed Asya, the seventh day, and sanctified it. Because in it, he said the word Asof. He had rested from all his work which Abraham Elohim made. Asof is plural of Asia, Malkut, the seventh body. Asof also relates to the Mercury of the secret philosophy. <coughs> So you see all of that? The seven letter, according to the Hebrew alphabet, is Zain. And Zain is always associated with the sexual organ or with the feminine aspect, the left side, Zain. And that's why it is written there that God made everything in the seventh day, Zain, the woman. But here, look how is, it is hidden the worth. Asia, which is Malkut, the physicality, is also said Asoth. We know what Asoth is. It means the Mercury of philosophy. And obviously, is there the Lelote Shin. Asoth is pointing to the extractum of Asia. It's a plural word that comes to be in you when you extract from Asia your physicality, from the waters, the extractum. And that's why in alchemy, we always name Asoth. But here, Moses wrote it with Hebrew letters. And it's because what he's talking about of the seventh day is meaning that in the very sexual act, you have to extract the asof in order to make all that which is written there that Elohim made. 
It's an alchemical statement. Because it's very clear there that Elohim rested all of the work that he made in Asoth in the seventh day. And that seventh day not only symbolizes the woman, but also symbolizes the physical body, Malkut, whether we are male or female. In that physicality builds the sexual semen, whether male semen or female semen. In alchemy, we call it semen, either feminine or masculine. And that is when you transmute, not when you ejaculate. When you ejaculate your semen like animal, you multiply it like an animal. That's easy. Anybody can do that, whether it's Kabbalist or not, a very religious person or not. Once the person, religious or not, reaches the orgasm, multiply. But in alchemy, we are talking about another multiplication, which is inside, not outside. And that multiplication means to take the asoth, which is the product of the transmutation. Because what you eat, what you think, and all the impression that you have, synthesize in your semen, in your, in your yad, the waters, you see, five. Akash, Tejas, Bayou, Apas, Pridvi, five in your physicality. And you receive it. And if you transmute that Athoth, create Isaac, Jacob, and Yosef. And this is very interesting that uh, I didn't write there, but I remember. <clears throat> in the book of Zohar, I read, it says, if you unite the letter Yad, that we know already what it is, with teeth, and then you have the river of Eden. What do you mean, the letter Yad with teeth? Do you get it? How do you write teeth? In Hebrew, shin. You see the letter shin, which means fire, right? But that means teeth. Shinin. And how many yads has the letter shin? The letter shin has three yads, right? All of you know the letter shin? Three yads connected to three arms through three vats. Here you find the arm and the hand of God. Three. Plus the yad, sheen, and the final nun. Nun means fish in Aramaic. Your sperm or your album is a fish where all the sheen is going. But sheen means teeth. And this is very important because it is not only transmuting the sexual energy, you have to pronounce the fire. The word in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And the Sohar says, Yad united with sheen is a river of Eden. What you find there, right? But then you find, curiously, but obviously very evident, that there are four letters, well, five, if you take the letter Shin, that's pronounced with your teeth. Shin! You see? You have to put your teeth together. Shin! What is the other letter? <coughs> which is called Sadik, the Sadi, 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 hmm? and in that letter Sadi, which we write Sadik, which means chaste person, is the yod too at the end, Sadi, and that's why that uh, Zadi is the letter that you use in order to write Itzahak, hmm? it, 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 
tzaak, right? And the other letter that is pronounced with the teeth, because there are two right here. We have two there. There are five rivers. Right? We have two, Shin and Tzadi. The other is Resh. Resh. You see? Resh. You put your teeth together and you roll your tongue. Resh is the letter R. Resh. You have another one. Which is the other one? We all re we were naming it. The seven letters. Sain. You have also the word. Sain. You see? Four, right? And the last one is. Samech. Samech. And then you have there. What this word says. If you unite Yad with Kith. You have the river of Eden with a sound, as, as a sound, because here is Eden in the throat. <coughs> Shin, Tsari, Resh. Uh, Sain and Samech. This is how you pronounce it, the five letters. Isn't it beautiful? This is, how, this is Moses, really. Was he making, uh, how do you call it? puzzles, anagrams? In order for only those that study to discover that. These are the rivers of Eden that relates to the, the word because God made with the word. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Huh? Sin, she said. Because the f light was within the fire. And you follow that, the sequence of that, you discover many mysterious things. And they, the, the meaning of Genesis. That is a book of, of alchemy. And you, had, uh, you, you discovered that about this mysterious river of Eden. <coughs> Before I forget, because it's written there, but I want to tell you. The wife of Abraham was Sarai. That's how it's written. Shin, Rush, and Yad, Sarai. And if you play those letters, you write head, Rush, written in Aramaic, because in this day and age they write it with Aleph. <coughs> but Rush, I mean head, meaning that the power of Sarai. Or Sarah, if you want, because the letter Yad is hidden with the hey, as we explain it. Whether it's Sarai or Sarah, the Yad is there. Is the head? She represents the head, the forces of the head that comes down in order to create Isaac, her first son. The wife of Isaac is Rebecca, or Rebecca, which we talk about in the last lecture. You see the, the, the first R there, or the forces of In. Now, the, and, and, and the wife of Jacob, one is Rachel, or Rachel, as many people said. This is R there, there, right? And Leah. But Leah, backwards, means them, El, or goddess, El. <coughs> the forces, of course, above, or the four rivers of Eden. So these are the generations of the archetypes of heavens and of the earth. Behibaram, when they were created by Abraham. By Yohawa Elohim, who made the earth and the heavens. Behibaram is an anagram of by Abraham, by Abraham, he said the first body. Because this is the heaven and the earth, Malkut. Explanation of the forming of the names Elohim and Abraham 
by the Holy One, Yod He Bab He, he said, He took me, we we'll talk about that many times, means who, and joined it to Ele, and this form Elohim, Gibor in Gebura. He also took Ma, which means what, and joined it to Aber, which means to create, and he formed with this Abraham. This is what is written in the Zohar about that anagram. But the book of Genesis, there are many anagrams there that you had to discover in order to see how to enter into these mysteries. Rabbi Isaac said, it has been said that Bereshit or Genesis synthesized the universe and everything contained in it, and as such is referred to in the scripture. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yod Chava in Ezekiel chapter 128. You see that uh, uh, image there of painting of what Ezekiel describes, which is made by uh, uh, somebody else and mainly Pehol. The society. And the Zohar says, it was the likeness in which was contained that of six others. The word Genesis or Bereshith may be thus interpreted and rendered it as Barashith, meaning created six. That is to say, after the form of Barashith, Bera Elohim created six. Because Shith is a contraction of six, and Bera means to create. Bera Shith means, by means of the letter Tav, which is the cross, Sarai. And Abraham, he said, created the six. Geburati, Fereth, Netzah, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut. If you visualize the word Bereshith, you find the word Sarai there. Sarai, in it. And the word Abraham, in it. Just Bra and Sarai. But are six letters. And then to point at Baines, in these two polarities, Abraham and Sarai, we're creating the rest of the Sephiroth. Geburati, Fred, Netzah, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut. Thanks to the force of Elohim. And that's why it's represented like this. When you read the Bible. This is Hayot HaKadosh. Cry, speak, roar, bellow. The three primary forces. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Creating, you know, the human being below. After Ravi or Rabbi Isaac said that, then Ravi Joseph said, remember that Joseph relates to Yesod. He said, It is written, The flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come. And the turtle dove, the Holy Spirit, is heard in our land. That is from the son of Solomon. The occult meaning of the word flowers refers to the six higher and lower spheres appear on the earth. Refer to their archetypes, namely Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joachim, Boaz, and Joseph. Joachim is Netzah and Boaz is Hod. The time of the singular birth denotes the worship and glory rendered by men to the divine being after attaining to that or knowledge of these spheres, as the scripture says, so that my glory may make songs of praise to you and not to be silent. I will give you praise forever. That's in Psalms. Therefore, it is that the psalm containing these words is termed Miss more a song, which term is applied only to those psalms that David composed 
under the direct inspiration of the divine Shekinah. So Shekinah, as you know, is represented according to uh, this image that we were talking of the of Ezekiel's four creatures. The letter Yad is above Keter, and this letter Yad is the Shakti potential. Shekinah is how it's called in Hebrew. We have to awake the Shekinah in us, which is the letter Yad. You see? That's why if you inquire, who made all of these beautiful trees? Keter. Because he is the God that represents the letter Yad. And the letter Yad is the seed. When you open a fruit, you find the Yad. The seed. Which is the Shakti potential of the Divine Mother Nature. That always we insist. If you want to eat a fruit that has the power of Mother Nature, is the Yad, the seed. But in this day and age, ignoramuses are creating new fruits without seed. Meaning without the Shakti potential. There are fruits that are feminine, that had many seeds, like the pomegranate. Right? But remember, there is another hand that receives. If the fruit had a seed, it's good. It has potential for your soul, for your mind, for your spirit. If not, it's just garbage. Maybe beautiful and bigger. But if you eat garbage, fruits which are adulterated by ignoramuses of this day and age, you are just feeling your physicality and not your soul, not your mind, not your emotion, not your spirit. That's the meaning of heart, is you see how the seed comes out of the head, rush of Keter, the father of all delights. And here, <coughs> we are arriving And the main topic of our lecture, because in order for you to understand what I'm going to explain, you have to pay attention. Even if you are poor, you have to pay attention. You see, the poor is Malkut. And that's where we're giving a lot of gold to you in order for you to be rich. But if you are poor, you don't pay attention, how are you going to be wealthy? But now I assume that you are wealthy because I gave you all of these treasures. So here, what you find? Leah and Rachel, which is a painting based on what Dante Alighieri wrote. It is stated, <coughs> according to the Bible, that after Jacob had that dream where he saw the ladder of seven steps going up and down to heaven, he went into the land of his parents and found Laban, his uncle, the brother of Rebecca. And says, I was sent here because my father told me you have to have a wife from my parents. Of course, the higher forces. But if you inquire that, and if you read the Divine Comedy of Dante Alighieri, and then you have more strength of what you are talking about. Dante Alighieri, after going out of hell, go to the purgatory, which has seven steps. Coincidence? No. Nah. Dante is a great master. And at the seventh rung of that ladder, of that step of the purgatory, he fell asleep. And he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw Leah and Rebecca, the two wives of Jacob. 
But it's the same thing that Jacob had. He put his head, he says, on the rock, and he saw the ladder. And after that, he awoke of his dream, meaning that he was not asleep anymore, psychologically speaking. But people think that he will walk physically. No. It's psychological walk. Towards the land of his parents. Because if you want to go to the land of your parents, Abraham, Isaac, within you, you, Rebecca, within you, if you go in this physical world, you don't go, you don't find anywhere. It's inside. In the superior dimensions. This is how you go. And you say, oh, this is the land of my parents. Heavens. As, as Dante teaches there. And then he found that Leah, the first wife of Jacob, is collecting flowers. In order to adorn herself with those flowers. And then Leah said to Dante Alighieri, If you wonder who I am, let me tell you that I am Leah. And I am collecting these flowers in order to adorn myself with it. <coughs> if you wonder where my sister is, Rachel, she's just contemplating herself in the mirror or in the waters to see how beauty she is. Read the Divine Comedy, you will find that uh, story there written by Dante. Beautiful. Who are these two sisters? These two aspects of the soul, of the psyche, that Jacob, which is the human soul, has to marry. But that marriage is not physical. But in order to marry those, those two sisters, you have to go out of your body. You have to work very hard in the annihilation of your ego. You see seven steps. It is written with a Jekyll arrived to that land of his family. Laban has the two sisters, right? Leah and Zeus. But he's in love with Rahel, who is the youngest. This is like us. <coughs> when we start, we are identified with this physical world and with the beginning of our work. And we really are not paying attention too much to, the, to Leah, which is the higher force up there. And Laban, which means white, the light, tells to him, you have to serve me seven years. One week, he says, but seven days, seven years, one week. If you do that, I will give you my daughter. And he does it. And he thinks that he's receiving Rahel, but he's not receiving Rahel, he's receiving Leah. Well, this is in our custom, the oldest has to be married first and then the younger. If you want to marry the younger, where are the seven years for it? Totally is 14, right? But if you make a multiplication, Kabbalistically there, seven by seven is 49. This is showing us very clear. The, the scale of seven. First in the dream, seven bodies. Then seven and seven for each, each, each uh, wife. Seven by seven is 49 levels that you have to work with in order to develop the bodhicitta in Yesod. Because Jacob is the bodhicitta in Yesod. He is working there. These two superior aspects, Matthew Samael on the states in his books. There are four ethers related with the vital body. The first is the chemical ether. And the chemical ether is related with the metabolism of the physical body. And the ether of life, which relates to the multiplication of the species, physically speaking. These two ethers we are talking about here are related with the maidens, the servants, the, lo the lower hay of these two sisters, because they represent the ether of life and the reflector ether. The ether of life is Leah. The reflector ether is Rahel. 
we have to use those forces in us. Because while Leah is collecting flowers means that we are doing, collecting virtues. And she's adorning herself with virtue. This is the psychological work that we do in the 49 levels of the mind. We have to develop those virtues within. And those virtues are the children of both sisters. And while we work with those archetypes within, obviously, down here, Rachel, which is the lower part of those ethers, which is the reflector ether, the reflector is, reflects the light of Leah. And that's why she's always contemplating herself. This is what we do. When we work, we observe ourselves here. The reflection. What, what I'm doing? Am I collecting the archetypes, the virtues of my inner being? Because they have to descend on me as a bodhicitta. And you have to observe yourself to see that reflection. Which is Rahel. The one that we love the most. Because when we see it, oh, I notice that I'm developing this virtue. Oh, I notice that this light, this power in me. You love Rahel very much, right? And Leah is up there, and she feels that it's not loved. Meanwhile, she's doing her job. The two souls, one above and the other below, relate to the psyche. And of course, through the lower uh, ethers, also the vital body related with the physicality, we also work with, right? Because the maidens of each one of these two sisters relate to the physicality that we have. That's why they have four children. Remember the number four is Dalet. <coughs> these four children of these four, these two maidens of the two sisters and the rest of children relate to the sisters. But it's very significant that Rahel in herself only had two children. Leah had a lot in their maidens, but she herself has Yosef and Benjamin, the youngers. And it's precisely the story of Joseph and Benjamin that go into Egypt. That's why they go into Egypt. The two children of Rahel. You see that beautiful story, how it is hidden? You don't have to interpret that physically. Because they are virtues. Dante Alighieri says, a young and pretty woman came to me within a dream as she walked through a meadow, gathering flowers and singing while she said, whoever asks my name, let him know that I am Leah and I play my lovely hands in circles to make garlands for myself. For a glimpse of pleasure at the mirror, I adorn myself here. But my sister Rachel never leaves her mirror and sits all day. Her yearning is to see her shining eyes as mine is with my hands to adorn myself. She is content to look and I to labor. One soul that is happy and the other that is working hard. This is relation with psyche, with our psyche. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come, and the turtle dove, the Holy Spirit, is heard in our land, said Solomon. You see how Divine Comedy, Bible, Enoch, all of that is giving us the wisdom of the work that we have to perform in ourselves. And that is only the second step of the ladder. 
That's why when Jacob performed that second step, he comes down with all of his family to meet Esau. But he already have all of those virtues in him. And before meeting Esau, he fights with that angel that protects Esau. And that angel is the one that gives sexual strength to the physicality. Esau, in this case, represents the two lovers, the two lower uh, ethers. But he already conquered those two ethers. In order to prove that, before meeting Esau, he fights with that angel, which is the sexual strength of Esau. And he defeats the angel, the Elohim. And the, the angel says, you fought with God and with humans, and you won. Release me, because the sun is rising. And then Jacob says, I won't release you. First, you have to bless me, and then I'll release you. And then he says, because you fought with God, the forces, the forces of Eden, and won, and with humans, and won, you no longer will be called Jacob, but Israel, because you gather all of those forces, all of those archetypes within you. You see, that's what Israel means. That fight against that angel is in the sexual act. If in the sexual act you are defeated like an animal, a lot of people there call me and says, uh, can you tell me the name of my inner being? And then says, what do you want to know the name of your inner being? If your inner being doesn't tell you that name to you, which is your being, why am I going to tell you that? Work. The seven days or the seven years of Jacob, study that, win the battle, and if you defeat that forces, then you will receive your name. Because Israel means the union of all of those forces within you. Of course, Jacob, his inner name was Israel, of that patriarch. But in us, it will be different. Israel will be the conjunction of all of those archetypes, those virtues. But then you will, the angel will tell, well, your name is this, and relates to this force. So the angel, of course, before uh, releasing him, he touches his thigh. The thigh of that angel, or of Jacob, in other words, symbolizes the sexual force. He says that after that, Jacob was, uh, how you call limping. Because the angel thought that he was uh, triumphant, victorious. And after that, he met Esau. If he doesn't do that, Esau will be, because he was very angry, he stole the the first, uh, he calls call it the, the birthright for him, right? But Esau says, why? I don't have any enmity within you. You are welcome. You are welcome to your physicality. Your physicality now is enlightened. You are the bodhicitta of your physicality. And I control the two lower ethers here. But I recognize that you are really very advanced internally. And Esau get uh, in peace with him, with Jacob. <clears throat> now let us talk about this in synthesis, about the children of Jacob. And Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the creeping living soul and birds that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Genesis 1.20, that is related with Tifereth. To bring about the living soul and the birds that fly above the heavens is something that we have to perform alchemically. To bring about that is working, as Jacob did, with these two superior ethers and with the two inferior ethers, which are his wives and maids. 
in order to build Ruben, which is perception, Simon, which is knowledge, Levi, association, Judah, which is faith, Dan, which is judgment, Nephtali, which is altruism, God, which is memory, Asher, which is willpower, Issachar, which is love, Sebulon, which is fecundity, Dinah, dispute, because uh, those are the children of the Maidens and Leah. You see, D Dinah or Dina is the only daughter that Jacob had. So if we account all of these children of Israel, they are not 12, they are 13. 12 male and one female, Dina, which means justice or dispute. If you read the Bible, you will find what happened with Dina there, which is related with Malkut, the physicality. But we wrote this other quotation of the book of Genesis in order to point to Joseph and Benjamin, which are the only two uh, children of Rebecca, I mean uh, Rachel. And Elohim said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together to one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Genesis 1, 9. That verse relate to the third initiation of major mysteries. And that is made by Rachel. Because the first son of Rachel is Joseph. Joseph is the one that is going to Egypt, sold by his brothers. He's the only archetype that descends in our physicality. In order for us to work with it and to build the astral body. Joseph, of course, is associated with the Sephira Yesod. But in Gnostic Kabbalah, we know that the moon rules. Yesod and Hod. By building Yosef within us is how we build the astral body. That's why Yosef was skillful in dreams. Master Samael on the earth talking about Joseph, which the Pharaoh of Egypt said, your name will be Sapnat Panea. And that means revealer of secrets. And we place Joseph there in Hod because Hod and Yesod are ruled by the moon, by Joseph. In the third initiation of major mysteries, we developed the astral solar body. Matthew Samael explains that we have a double astral body. The other part of the astral body is called Benjamin, which is a superior aspect, which is related with Christ. That's why when you experience the third initiation of major mysteries, you experience that initiation together with all the drama that is written in the Gospels. When you experience that, which is called Benjamin in your astral body. So you have to understand Joseph and Benjamin got together. The story of it, I don't have to tell you because it's already written. Master Samael on the wrote the seven words. And in that book, he explains in detail about the creation of Joseph and Benjamin within us. And with that is enough because you can read it there. I don't want to go deeper in that because it's already done. The Master Samael says in the seven words, the occult name of the astral body is Sapnat Panea. The name of the astral body is made up of compound names. The first is Sapnat. This mantra corresponds to the, our inferior astral. And the second word, Panea, is the son of our 
cosmic crestus, which links our physical personality with the supreme immanence of the solar father. Joseph represents the astral body of the human being, and Benjamin represents the superior astral, the divine crestus, which is contained within the astral body of the human being, as the silver cup is contained within the sack of Benjamin. Properly stated, the sack is the astral body, and the divine astral, or Benjamin, is our crestus who is Benjamin himself, the superior astral. Who has ever spoken about the three igneous serpent and about the ultrabiology and ultra physiology of the superior astral? Who knew that within the astral body, another superior astral body is formed? Who knows the manner in which our third serpent ascends through the very subtle medulla of our Benjamin or superior astral? I bluntly affirm that all of the books which have been written in the world about Theosophism, Rosacrucianism, Spiritualism, etc., are completely antiquated for the new Aquarian era. And therefore, they must be revised in order to extract from them only what is essential. Here I, Samael on the Lord, deliver unto humanity the authentic message that the White Lodge sends to humanity for the new Aquarian era. This is very important that you study this as a sequence of these lectures. Because we explain the whole book of Genesis and you see Joseph goes into Egypt and Benjamin, all that, and you know after that Moses is born. And about Moses, we talk a lot already which is the Exodus and all the books written Kabbalistically and alchemically. So, this is precisely what uh, Jacob said <coughs> to Joseph, the blessing. You see, Prat is Yasod. And when you transmute your sexual energy, Rachel gives birth to Joseph, your astral body. And the Genesis chapter 49, verse 22 to 27 states, Son of Prat, Yosef, son of Prat, over a fountain, daughters strive, go up the bull. Those daughters are the souls to work hard in themselves with the power of the bull, which is a sexual strength. But of course, in the Bible, I don't know why they don't write or translate that as it is written. Ben Prat, Yosef Ben Prat. And Prat is Yasod, the fourth river of Eden, a sexual force. It's very clear that, that our own particular Joseph is the son of our sexual energy of chastity, because Joseph is the one that is tested in Egypt. The wife of a eunuch wants to have sexual act with him. When you read, you say, well, eunuch, eunuch means that has no testicles. How comes a eunuch has no testicles, has a wife? You see? But if you understand alchemy and Kabbalah, you understand that a eunuch is the one that transmutes the sexual energy, that it doesn't multiply like animals. That's a eunuch. Because there are many three types of eunuchs. Eunuchs made by men, those that are being born like eunuchs, are with plain, and when you transmute your sexual energy, you become a eunuch. There's another symbol. So this is precisely, if you read the Genesis 49, you will read what uh, Jacob said to Joseph in that book. And uh, I am not going to read for you because you can read it. But we quoted there in the PDF, and you can read it and decipher all the meanings of it and enjoy it. 
Do you have questions? Ask and you will answer. Knock and it will be open to you. So, on one of the slides, you, you had a quote from the Song of Solomon. Um, and it was talking about the, about the flowers and the birds. And you had previously talked about the seeds. And when you were mentioning the Leah, um, you were saying that the flowers represented the virtues. In that Song of Solomon, could you say that those that those flowers and birds, the flowers represent the opening of the chakra, the many petals? Obviously, uh, uh, the flowers or the virtues that we had to develop goes along with the chakras. <coughs> Remember that we have seven main chakras in the spinal medulla. We have seven bodies, right? Seven bodies multiplied by seven chakras or seven churches are 49. And it's precisely what Jacob does, working with the 49 fires, with Leah and Rahel. And those flowers are also obviously related with the chakras. Once you develop virtues, the chakras, goes, they go along with it. Right? People want to develop chakras to see, as the Master Samael on the earth said in one of his lectures, wants to see things uh, and to astral projection and all that is beautiful. But if they don't work in the scale of Jacob, which is the scale of the water, it's obvious, right? Because you saw this water and he works with the four ethers of the vital body, which are water, symbol of the water. And within that water is the fire. Once you reach the seventh step, then the baptism of fire comes, which is explained in the seven words with the advent of Joseph and Benjamin, which is also symbolic. This is in many steps, because Moses wrote that in steps symbolically, but there are many octaves in every story. And the development of the chakras is one, one thing, the main thing. We have to prepare ourselves, because if you read the book of Revelation, the seven churches, you find that in order to develop each church, the virtues required for that development. But it's seven. As the Master Samael says, uh, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven cups. Right? And the number seven is very important. Another question? Prat, when you look in the dictionary, refers to uh, Yasad. That's why when you uh, read uh, in the Bible, Prat, the, le the, the word before is Ewa, which means the Prat, right? And from that two words, they made the word Euphrates, right? Which is commonly you said, oh, the four rivers is the Euphrates. But really, the Bible said Prat. And the son of Frat is Joseph, the interpreter of dreams. And it is amazing to see that when you read the Bible, Joseph becomes famous because he interprets the dream of the Pharaoh that relates to seven, uh, seven cows that were skinny and all the seven cows that were fat. And Joseph said, well, that, the meaning of that is that uh, the seven fat cows, seven years of abundance. And the other seven skinny cats means another seven years of famine. So I advise you, because the seven cows, fat cats are coming now. Seven abundance. So save all of that. Save that in your stores. And with the seven years of the mean comes, the skinny cuts, I mean uh, cows, then you will have abundance of grains. Esoterically, the grain is your sod. Have faith as the seed of a mustard seed. 
That's the yard. And you will learn mount mountains. Collect seeds. Collect the yard within you. And then you will perform all that is written in the book of Genesis. Which is generation. Right? Of Abraham and Sarai. In other words, the spirit of God that hovers above the head. Resh, Sarai. In all the central nervous system. And make all those miracles. With masculine and feminine. And the feminine forces among the four rivers of Eden, Master Samael says, are related to Hedikel, which is the heart, the feminine aspect, the woman. And the last river, which is Frat, is the sexual feminine force in the genitalia. And that's why Frat means adult cow. So when we talk about the feminine forces, we talk about the mercury of the wise. And that frat is, of course, the cow or that mercury, which is the outcome of transmutation. And that's why Yosef is called the son of frat which means the son of the cow, the son of the mercury of the wise, which is the feminine force that rises from Yesod, Frat, the cow, and goes to the left, to the bull, which is Gebura. And this is what is written there, as you can read in the book of Genesis. Frat, Yosef, son of Frat, son of the cow, in other words. And the father of Joseph is, of course, the masculine force, which is called the bull. That's why Joseph is also called the bull. So you see there, the bull of Geburah, the masculine for force of Samael, and the cow, which is Frat that is commonly called in the Bible, Euphrates. But it is in Egypt, Mizrahim, which is a feminine force, Malkut, that gives birth the astral solar body, which is Yosef. Sarai is the mantra of fire. This is what the name Sarai hides. Listen, the first letter of the name Sarai is the letter Shin, but Sarai is pronounced S, the letter Shin, which is the mantra of the fire. But when you pronounce the name Sarai, or the word Sarai as a mantra, you have to pronounce the letter Shin, the spelling of the letter Shin as S-I-N, Sin, like this. Sin. And thereafter, you pronounce the other two letters, Resh and and Yod, which sounds like this together. So that is the mantra that transmute the fire of Prat to the head, because the Yod vibrates in the pineal gland. And the S transmute the fire from Yesod to the pineal gland, and the letter N sustains the fire in the pineal gland.
the crown, keter, and the letter R vibrates in the crown, keter, which is the, the R is a resh, the head. And again, you pronounce the letter yod, the sound E of yod, in order to make more emphasis in the fire in the head. Remember, from yesod to kater, like this. Seeing. That's the mantra of Sarai, the wife of Abraham, the innermost, that you pronounce in order to elevate the sexual force of frat to Keter, the crown. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. How does that relate? That, that's their thoughts. No, but uh, there is written with uh, yeah. with uh, l Greek Greek letters. But really, if you observe it, there are uh, Latin letters and Greek letters. A thought written like that, according to Eliphaz Levi, encloses that, meaning all the forces of mysteries. Latin mysteries, Greek mysteries, and Hebrew mysteries. All of them together is a thought, a thought. That's why when Jesus Christ that brought, brought all the synthesis of all of these thoughts, Pilate says, right on top of the cross of this, guy, of this person that is going to be crucified, <coughs> Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews, and then he says that because we're a lot of uh, Latin people there, a lot of Greek and Hebrew. He wrote that in three languages, which at that time synthesized the amalgamation of all the forces because Malkut is a mixture of all the forces that we had to take advantage of. And that is precisely a soth, the symbol of. And that's why the book of Genesis in the second uh, chapter states that God made everything with a thought or a thought, which is the same. This is what uh, Moses wrote. And this is uh, significant. We have a pentagram there that we made in which we wrote Aleph Tav, united with a thought. This is what Eliphaz Levi stated in his book, and the Master Samael stated that this is how you had to make your pentagrams when you are doing it. Pronounce the Kabbalistic word Aleph and Tav, which are the beginning and the end of the Hebrew alphabet, united by the mysterious word, mantric word, Asoth, which is the same Asoth that we found here in the second day of Genesis. Because Atzoth synthesizes Pishon, Hedikel, Gihon, and Prat, the four ethers that uh, Jacob worked with in tantrism, sexual magic, white sexual magic, chastity, and the development of all of those virtues. You mentioned the baptism by water. And we know the baptism by fire and the baptism by light is related to initiation. So what is exactly the baptism of water related to? Well, the baptism of water symbolizes all of the work that we are doing in Yasad. And all the rivers also that you see in the graphic. Gihon is Hesed. Pishon is Gebura. Tiferet is Hedikel. And Prat is Yesod, which are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. 
Those are the four that we need in order to work with that. That's the baptism of water, which we receive in the second initiation and third initiation, because the moon rules Yesod and Hod. Once we are developing the baptism of water that the gospel talks about, then you are capable of entering in the baptism of fire. But this is very high. It's not like people in this day and age think, oh, the baptism of water, they are baptized in a pool, or they go to a river or to a lake, and you are baptized by water, as is written in the Gospels. And this is done. This is, that's symbol. Like the mikvah in, in, in the Jewish tradition. That's symbol. It's okay to do it as a symbol. All traditions are symbolic. But that baptism is related with seven sephiroth. Baptism of water goes to Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzah, Tifereth, Geburah, and Hesed. That's the baptism of, of water. And when you reach Hesed, the top of the 49 levels, because 7 by 7 is 49 levels, then you are prepared in order to receive the baptism of fire that was hidden within the water. And when you receive the baptism of fire, says the Master Samael on the or, very clear in one of the lectures, it's called the seven uh, minds and seven truths. He says that you receive the enlightenment. But it's a alchemical work that you have to do. It's not like people think. You are baptized uh, in the pool or whatever place that that church follows. And after that, they say that re they receive the fire of Pentecost. And they start talking in, in, in languages, in tongues. It doesn't no sense. That's easy, from one day to the other. This is a very long work, Matthew Samael states. About 30 years of work, very hard within yourself, in order to reach that level, if you work daily. Because many other initiatives take lives in order to reach that. But we, all, we have to understand the meaning of the Bible, the message, in order to follow that alchemically, Kabbalistically, and not to the dead letter, literally, like many people do in this day and age. There's a lot of people there that think, unfortunately, naively, that they are saved because they were baptized symbolically in a lake, in a pool, in any church. And that they receive, they say, the Pentecost fire, which is the baptism of fire. Without reading the Bible, that that Pentecost comes after the four Gospels. Because in the book of Acts is where the Bible talks about the advent, advent of the Pentecost fire. And that book of Acts is after the four Gospels. And those four Gospels relate to the four rivers that we are talking here. Not before, but after. But we have to study Kabbalah and Alchemy in order to understand it. So you mentioned that, is it Jacob fights against the gods and the humans? Or the four gods and the humans? Okay. Jacob is, symbolizes the fight that you had to do in the very sexual act. By defeating your lust, your animal soul, which is Nefesh. And that's to fight with those forces which come from above. Which are ruled by that angel. And you transmute, you defeat that angel, meaning you defeat the forces of that angel related with the animal kingdom. If you reach the orgasm and the spasm in the sexual act, that means that those forces of that angel defeated you. Well, could fighting the humans also symbolize fighting against the Nevali? No, the fighting against humans means it's on humanity. Because that, that, that force is not only in the physical plane, your humanity, is related with all the planes inside of you. It's not that, okay, I physically already defeated my physicality, my, I am chased physically. Meanwhile, when you are tested in the astral plane, you are a fornicator, an adulterer. That means that maybe in the physical world you acquire chastity, but not in the internal levels of your mind. Because there are seven levels by seven, 49. And that's the meaning, it says, to defeat physically and internally that angel. 
and that's a great work. And then you really receive enlightenment, and you awake. Before that, we are just a joke. That's the truth. Right? As I said in my last lecture, a golem. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be